Holy Spirit. We ask in this morning that no one will leave this place the way they came. And those watching online, may your presence, your manifest presence, be visible to them. May your manifest presence be visible to them right in their various jurisdiction and locations and geographical places, God. Let your glory and your power bring healing to the sick. To those who are confused, frustrated, upset, aggravated, overwhelmed in their emotional state, mentally drained, concerned, worried, anxious. Lord, in our flesh, we will never find direction. In our soul, we can search and find direction. Our soul is lost. And that's why this morning, Father, us together to you pull us together to you those places and those those places and spaces in our heart where we we desiring answers we're looking for answers in the next one hour as i begin to teach and minister your word give us answers god those who are appointed to death as I teach this morning, Holy Spirit, let the revelation of truth override demonic decrees. Let the revelation of your word override demonic boundaries and limitations placed over your people. Father, I declare freedom. <laughs> I declare freedom this morning by the administration of the counsel of your word, by the administration of your spirit. I declare freedom. I declare freedom in the airwaves. I declare freedom in this house. I declare freedom unto your people this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit. No one lives here the same. No one watches this broadcast and remains the same, God. Father, we renounce religion the fakery of religion the falsehood of religion we renounce and we denounce religiosity legal, legal legalism we denounce it we reject it for this morning we cry out for your spirit your spirit your spirit we cry out for the move of your spirit we cry out to you for a move of your spirit a move of your spirit and not religion Jesus once again breathe upon us lift those hands and tell him Lord breathe upon me this morning breathe upon me this morning Holy Spirit breathe upon me this morning Holy Spirit breathe upon me once again Spirit of God like you did on that day when the disciples of Jesus when they were gathered up when they were gathered up you breathe upon them breathe upon us while they went hiding at the room hiding Lord breathe upon us again we ask you that you will breathe into the areas of our lives where there is barrenness where we are lost frustrated those places where religion has taken over the place of your glory breathe on us bring upon this ground breathe upon this flesh breathe upon this tabernacle of clay breathe upon this this flesh this casket of clay breathe upon us once again and give us hope give us life we join with the celestial entities we join, we co-join with them right now, this morning, in that holy traffic in the heavens. Let everything as it is in heaven, let the activities, the movement, the undertakings of heaven be in 
alignment. May our movement on earth be in alignment with what is going on in heaven. As it is in the heaven, so let it be here in our earth, oh God. Father, we're asking, <laughs> we're not even asking that you back us up. We're not asking that you back us up. We're asking you, oh God, that we'll be in sync in sync synchronized with the workings of your spirit with the moving of your spirit synchronize 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 us let heaven flow into us let the life of heaven let the movement of heaven let us it is in heaven the enterprises taking place in heaven let it be made manifest here on earth in our earth tonight this morning god we magnify you we bless you we exalt you this morning. Come and give the Lord praise. Shout, shout, give the Lord praise. Clap your hands, all you people. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory. Glory. Let's be seated. Let's be seated this morning. Welcome this morning to Kingdom Awakening International. The place where God is right now. Hallelujah. By his spirit. <laughs> we are surrounded with a whole host of angelic beings we have been surrounded this morning and those who are with us are more than those who are not with us amen the bible says in the book of hebrews we have come to mount zion we have come to the city of the living god we have come to the company of innumerable angels innumerable you can't count it you can't count it we've come into the assembly the, the the company of innumerable angels many of us don't understand that we are not just we are not just alone we are never alone every time that's what the scripture says where two or three are gathered together in my name i am there with them why because we have come where into the company of innumerable angels that's what jesus was telling them he says wherever you are gather together in my name i am there and i'm not just the only one there i come with my angelic beings i come with the messengers these illuminate beings from the corridors of the spirit they come with me and they minister to you it's not just me ministering to you they they take their position they take their assigned position and they minister to you and that's why when we leave a service like this that is so anointed our experiences are all unique and different so different and unique to some to some they they come to that place of brokenness to some they feel some fire it all depends because these are the workings and the undertakings of this illuminant this illuminant technicians these are spirit technicians. These are spirit architects. They come in to mold and build. They come in to build the house, this temple. They come in to build the house by the spirit. And that's why you come into a gathering like this. You come into a gathering like this. You probably, you probably are feeling sick. You having, maybe you're having a headache. You have some pain in your body or you're suffering some kind of affliction as we gather together this 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 medical spiritual medical technicians and architects they step into the structures and the built up of your being they go into your anatomy and they begin to realign and reconfigure reconfigure things in your life all of a sudden you feel free all of a sudden you feel delivered all of a sudden the pain you had before is gone it is the walking of the spirit of god i am there where two or three the number two three stands for witness i i, I put validity i i validate your coming together i i validate i approve your gathering together and i hear god says this morning i have approved your gathering he has approved our gathering this morning glory to god it's not about crowd it's not about crowd it's about you being conscious of who is with us glory to god it's about being conscious of who is with us glory to god he is here he is here. I remember in the 80s and the 90s 
we used to sing a song by Candy Staten. And it says, Jesus is here right now. Do you know that song? I'm not asking this one here. Because, you know, <laughs> old school. <laughs> Jesus is here right now. He is here to meet your needs. And you know the song? Oh, gee. That's the part we like. Oh, Jesus is here right now powerful song we used to sing it those days those were the times those were the times when christianity was so consecrated no playing around when you say church people can't wait sunday is too far to wait people are already knocking at the door do we have church today oh bring back those days don't but don't bring back the religion but bring back those days glory to god jesus he said it clearly in his word if i be lifted up if i be lifted up i will draw all men to myself to myself to myself to myself where are we right now we are right with him to himself we are with him as we exalt him as we worship him as we bless his holy name glory to the father glory to the father how many of you have been following the prophetic flow <laughs> you've been following it some of you are not if you haven't been following it I don't know what else you're following we need to investigate who is going to be my investigating officer to check when i come on live they don't come with the people who don't come on just send me their names or just write them uh let's use uh, maybe terry at the back yeah terry terry just give me a list of faces you don't see i'll pray over them after the broadcast <laughs> i'm just joking <laughs> Everybody say with me this morning, it's divine strategies for the next level. I hope you're not tired of this word, this phrase, next level as yet, because you're going to be hearing it throughout the year. Prophet as was saying, are you still doing next level? I said, what else are we going to do? <laughs> we are on it. We're going to talk about it until we see it, until we walk in the reality of the next level. And many of you are already entering that place. You're already moving in that next level. We are stepping in. Some of you are already in the terrains of the next level. You're already experiencing it. You're already feeling something. You're already being shaken in your comfort zone. And something is shaking you in your comfort zone. All of a sudden, you're feeling so dissatisfied with where you are. When the call for the next level comes, it comes with a feeling of dissatisfaction. The clarion call for the next level comes with a dissatisfaction. One. The number two, it also comes with a fresh hunger for something you cannot oftentimes place your finger on. You don't know what it is, but you just know there is more. There is more for you. There is more to this the call the sound the alarm for the next level also comes with a feeling of terminating the current season or the current experience it comes with that feeling of terminating see there is no germination without termination if you must experience a germination of a new seed of a new thing of a new move of god of a new thing in your life you must embrace also the process of termination something must be terminated in order to experience a germination of something glory to god when you plant a seed when you put a seed on the ground that seed in order for that seed to germinate it has to die that process
process of death is termination of its original state the original state must be terminated give me a bit of volume here the, the, the original state of that if it's a corn the original state of that corn has to be broken it has to be terminated and when corn begins to sprout you don't see that seed anymore that seed all of a sudden dissolves and disappears in the soil but at harvest time that one seed that you that has disappeared and when it's growing you're seeing leaves you're seeing the stem you're seeing you're not seeing the seed where is the seed that i sowed where is it what i'm seeing doesn't look like it but just hold on a little bit because the harvest is appointed and when the harvest after after the while you start seeing the corn start burning you start seeing the corn board then you start seeing one corn producing probably 400 corn in one comb one seed producing about 400 three to 400 seeds in one comb in one you've you lost it felt like a loss when you sowed that seed on the ground because you can't see it anymore it has disappeared it has died it's terminated you, you can't see it anymore but just wait a minute the story of that seed is not over. Glory. And sometimes just because you don't see that seed, people will people will think you've gone crazy. Why does he or why does her why does she keep sowing? She keep planting the seeds when when, the, when she's not seeing harvest. We're not seeing the harvest. Keep sowing. Keep sowing because God has a way. God has a way of working. God does not just partner with your with you, He also partner with what you sow. You say, Apostle, what are you talking about? When the seed is on the ground, are you on the ground? No. You are not independent of what you sowed. You are independent of what you sowed. You took that corn, you put it on the ground, you walked away. You are at home, you traveled, you went on a trip, you forgot you even sowed it. God says, you have forgotten, but I haven't forgotten. I am not only partnering with you as my son and my daughter, I'm also partnering with the very seed you sowed. And what happens is this. What happens is this, God begins to, because he has partnered with that seed that you sowed, he begins to release the natural and the supernatural forces to come upon that very seed, independent of you. Amen. Independent of you. You forgot you sowed. You forgot you did that. God is now God is no longer just dealing with you now he's dealing with the seed he has now covenanted himself with the seed and he releases the rain to come on it <laughs> he releases the sunlight to come on it he releases the heat to come on it he even releases the, the, the he releases certain moisture the dews of heaven to come upon that same ground and all of this process is working together for the death <laughs> for the death of what you sowed and after a while after the process of death is concluded the season of death has ended then the season of life emerge <laughs> weeping men dear Weeping is not permitted to endure for more than a night. Weeping is not permitted to endure for more than a night. Weeping is constrained and confined to a night. A night. So you are going through something for three months. God says it's a night. You're going through that pain for six months. God says it's only a night. 
in the sight of God, in God's perspective, it's only a night. It's only a night. You say, I've been going through this for a while now. It's been six months. It's been five years. I've been going through it. <laughs> the scripture says, in the a day. A day. Huh? A day. In the sight of God, it's like what? A thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. So you say, I've been going through this for six years. God says, it's only a night. It's only a night. It's only a night. And because in the sight of God, it is only a night, that's why you've not been consumed with what you are going through. You're going through it, but outwardly, you don't look like what you're going through. Because God is releasing everything to secure you, to protect you, because it's just a night. He makes the impact to feel like a night. It's longer in human senses, in human evaluation, it's longer than a night. In human senses, in human feeling, in your mental you know, state, it looks like it's, it's more than a night. But God in his infinite wisdom, we make it, we turn it around, we hold it in his hand, and make you feel the impact of a night as if it just happened. Joy comes in the morning. Have you seen a pregnant woman before? I don't think many of you have seen a pregnant woman before. Just me. <clears throat> when a woman is pregnant, all that pain, all that babe, all that heaviness, that big stomach, that thing, all that. The day that thing drops, joy comes. I watched a video years ago, a drama, and this lady, when she was in the labor room, she was cursing her husband out. You wicked man! I would never! You wicked man! Insulting him! He was in she was in labor. She was saying all kinds of stuff, bad stuff against this man few years later she was back there again i hate you i hate you john i hate you john for what you did to me john few years down the line she was back there again it's a drama they did it you know how movies go few years again she had another one she keep having about five children all the time i hate you john see what you did to me john but when the baby comes there's joy I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning. That's a word for you this morning. Give me Jeremiah chapter 8 10 because God wants to give us some powerful strategies that we need to engage <clears throat> to step to the next level. Amen. Because I, I believe that we are already we are already stepping into something new. We are already stepping into something new. And let me say this to you something new like I've, I've done this series i've been doing this series since the beginning of the year it's different there are different things they're different the definition the definition for the next level is is many things it's many things it, it's it's a whole lot it's a whole lot it means different things with every person it means different thing for every person but one thing for sure is that the next level it brings you it, it refers to a higher or more advanced stage of something a higher or more advanced stage of something often involving greater complexity greater skill or achievement in terms of growth or development it reaches the next re, reaching the next level means pushing beyond the current limitations and striving for improvement and progress it also refers to reaching a higher position or status in the spirit in a particular field or endeavor ultimately the next level is a way to change ourselves and to cause us to continue to grow and evolve to the version of God in you 
saints, many of us don't understand that there are, there are, there are versions in humanity. There are versions. There are versions. Versions. Today you are in this space. Tomorrow you are not in that space. Our versions, human, human versions keep changing. It keep changing. Today you love coffee. Tomorrow you you dislike coffee you don't want to taste coffee you don't want to even smell coffee around you the next day wow i miss coffee you're back to coffee again there are several versions at the several versions as our taste birds changes so our our, our, our personalities and the state of being continue to evolve it keeps evolving and that's why god says the next level is no longer going to be the ever changing version of you it's going to be the version of God in you. The next level is God revealing his version, his nature, his life, his character in you. And when, when you begin, when you come to that place where God has now clothed you or endorsed you or, 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 or the word is clothed. You've been clothed with this version of God. When you come to that place, your thoughts are now the same with God's thoughts. Your ways are now equal with the ways of God. You now come to that place of being in sync with the movement of God. What God is doing is what you are doing. What God is saying is what you are saying. What God is thinking is what you are thinking. Don't think I'm just preaching. These are possibilities. These are possibilities question how did peter know that jesus is the christ how did peter now you got to first of all understand the cultural the cultural space the cultural understanding of the jews the the, the cultural and the historic uh, uh, state of the jews the jews are looking for a physical messiah who will be a politician who will fight the government of Rome because they are under this government of Rome that is wicked they make them pay so much taxes they put so much limitations and burden on them and so they are waiting for a messiah who will come fight the Roman Empire who will come fight the Roman system and give them freedom to be who they are as God's people, God's nation. So Jesus came and all he was doing is talking about love your neighbor. Love your, love your who? Love your neighbor as yourself. If, one, if someone slaps you on this side of your face, turn the... What? The law says. The law contradicts what you are saying. What are you talking about? The law says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You are coming here and you are telling us he wants someone slap you on your on your left side, turn your right cheek. What are you talking about? They disliked him. They didn't want to listen to all that. Holy Spirit, thank you once again. You've done it. <laughs> listen to all of that <laughs> did you want to listen to all of that then Peter or Jesus was asking them what do men because because Jesus knows what people are thinking because they're thinking that he should be uh, they're, they're thinking that the real Messiah must participate in politics you must go to Rome you must arrest the Roman Emperor arrest him use your powers jesus use your powers to make him disappear you just appear before the emperor of rome on his throne and you just do like this and the emperor of rome will just disappear or melt and become like like ice on the ground they were expecting stuff like that something supernatural but Jesus says <laughs> my kingdom is different from the kingdom of this world <laughs> when they hit you don't hit them back that's what the law says I tell you I tell you <laughs> forgive them 
when someone offend you forgive them he's coming with peace talking about peace and all this stuff and these guys were upset sometimes they want to stone him for what he's saying <laughs> in the midst of all of that understanding in the midst of all that persuasion of the of of of, of the judaistic the Juda, Ju, judaistic law the laws of moses peter knew that peter having that mindset of the law the laws of moses the law of retaliation retaliate fight those who fight against you contend with those who contend against you jesus says who do men say that i am <laughs> They were all saying all kinds of things. Oh, you're like a Jeremiah. So you are, you are like a, you are like Elijah. You are like this. You are like this person. You are like that prophet. You are like all that this, this other prophet. They were making all their guesses. Peter paused and said, "You are the Christ." Reading it today, it looks like it's just something simple. But what Peter? What happened to Peter is this. Peter has left the version of himself he moved away from the version of the law he moved away from the historic and the cultural cultural persuasions of his of the nation of israel of his of israel he moved away from all the limitations and provisions of the laws of moses and he presented himself his mind was locked his mind was locked at that moment with the conversation of heaven here on earth he's here on earth right here on earth in the presence of jesus he tuned he was caught up if you could use the word rapture he was raptured in the spirit and he heard the conversation about who christ is and then he stand right in the presence of Jesus. Now, another thing you need to understand that the man Jesus standing in the presence of Peter and the disciples, that's the man Jesus. That's the man Jesus. But the Christ is in the spirit. There are two dimensions now. There is Jesus and then there is the Christ so Peter is standing before Jesus but Peter left Jesus refused to identify with Jesus at that moment because if, was, if he was to identify with Jesus right at that moment he would say you are a prophet one of the prophet like they all say but Peter moved away tune himself away from that physical version of Jesus and tune into the dimension of the crystals which is Christ in the spirit and when he went in there he had divine encounters with angelic beings he met with all the prophets right there stepping in the spirit he met with all the prophets and he began to scan in the heavens peter began to scan the anointing the spirit of peter began to scan the heavens to see who or where the messiah is he checked the whole realms of the spirit and he couldn't find that messiah then he came back to the earth realm and said yeah is the messiah you are the messiah you are the christ that has been sent from heaven to the earth as messiah you are the anointed one you are the christ and jesus smiled at that moment and he said <laughs> peter you caught it you caught it but you didn't catch it with the version of yourself as peter you won't know it but as peter who is in Christ you caught it as Peter who stepped from the natural realm into the spiritual realm you caught it so at that moment Peter was in sync with the conversations with the activities with the business with the economy of heaven right at that moment and he spoke from that place and Jesus said my father who is in where heaven revealed it to you 
my father he could have said my father revealed it to you he re he he emphasized he emphasized the location of his father because it is only in the location of his father you can have access to to such to such data those data is hidden from eyesight from eyes from the eyes of men from the wisdom of men it's only locked away it's only locked away in the vault of the father in the vault of the spirit that's where it's locked and that's why jesus says you crack the code you crack the code peter bad boy you crack the code you had access to break through the seals of heaven and to know things that has that has been hidden from man for thousand years flesh and blood cannot access this data flesh and blood cannot access this kind of truth it's too weighty it's too powerful it's too deep it's not meant for flesh it's not meant for blood it's meant it's meant for spirits ah. <laughs> it's meant for spirits saints of god the bible describes us as sons of god only sons of God have access to this revelation. Sons of God. Sons of God. Who have the DNA of heaven. Not the DNA of earth. They are incorrupted in their spirit. Yet they are physically present here. But their spirit comes from the heavens. Not church folks. Not church folks. No. It's not church now. It's not church now. It's not church now. It's not church. It's men who walk by the spirit. Men who walk in the mover, who walk with the spirit. How, how, how? <sighs> These are dimensions. Dimensions. So I tell you this. I tell you this. We can be here on earth and walk with the divine. We can walk with the divine. Shane will call me and tell me challenges at his workplace how they are aggravating him trying to make him upset and all of that I said Shane let Shane die <laughs> don't respond as Shane respond as a spirit and when people offend you let the spirit respond when the spirit responds the outcome of spirit's response. <laughs> That's why Jesus says, when they hit you, turn the other side. Because it's against human law and human demeanor or behavior. No one hit me and you walk away. I'll hit you back by nature. So go beyond natural abilities. Go beyond natural limits. Do what nature don't endorse and don't do. Let spirit respond. And I'll tell you this. These things are difficult. Unless you are a person that have dedicated your life to prayer, the word and fasting fasting is not i want money let me go and fast no that's a wrong wrong it's january 99 percent of churches are fasting are we fasting no friend of mine asked me you guys are not fasting this year i said fast for what all what god did for me last year did i fast to get it <laughs> must i fast before god bless me if i have to fast before god will bless me then he's not a good god he's not a good father he made food for me to enjoy i can't fast for everything lord i need shoes i go and fast lord i need a car i go and fast lord i need a job i go and fast lord i need a, a wife go and fast lord i need a tall dark and handsome you go and fast This year, God will give single ladies tall, dark, and handsome in this church. This is the third time I'm talking about this. Let me move from that topic. 
But watch this. But watch this. Don't get me wrong. Fasting is great, but you be led to fast. There is the aspect of fasting where you are led to fast, and there's the, then there's the aspect of fasting where you decide to fast based on your state of being. You become so carnal. You become so fleshy. You 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 just so you're not connecting with the spirit. Declare a fast by yourself. Go into a fast, and that's the only time to say, "Lord, I need a house. I need this. I need that." It's not about a need. It's not about a need at this time. It's about destroying, subduing your flesh, so that your spirit man will be alive and be in sync with the movement of heaven. Then you'll be able to have you have sharp discernment and once you have the outcome or the blessing the benefit of a sharp discernment is that you will always have or be where god wants you to be your choices will be right your decisions will be right you will do things right when you have spiritual discernment you won't have demons to be fighting because by by default you are in sync you are walking in discernment so the things you do are things approved by heaven so there's no demon fighting you in that when you start seeing yourself fighting demons all the time demons are fighting you all the time it means something is not connecting there is sick your the signal your spiritual signals and heaven with heaven is not in sync and that's when you need to go on a fast when you're not picking up the signals of heaven that's when you need to go on a fast to bow your flesh to kill your flesh to to subdue your flesh so that your spirit man will be sharpened so that you can have access to the conversations of heaven you can know the mind of god fast to know the mind of god and not just to receive from god now if you know the mind of god it's easy to leave right it's easy to leave when you know the mind of God and you are walking in the mind of God, there are no mistakes. There are no second guessing. That is resolved. That's taken care of. So there are two types, two dimensions to fasting rather. There's the fasting being inspired by the Spirit and then there's the fasting of choice. The fasting of choice. What we did in December at the close of the year 2023 was a fast driven by the spirit so that we align ourselves so that we align ourselves in the course of the year take moments fast and pray and seek the face of the Lord so that your spirit man will be aligned with heaven this is what we call authentic Christianity authentic life of Christ they are, they are, we call it the ascended life of Christ glory to God now watch this now watch this ah. give me jeremiah chapter 18 divine strategies for the next level jeremiah chapter 18 jeremiah chapter 18 the word which came to jeremiah from the lord the next level require a word from the lord as you sitting here right now or watching online you are hearing my voice because god is speaking to you i'm just a vessel look at that the word which came it came to jeremiah now for the word of god to come to you you must be well positioned you must be well positioned if you're in a busy place god can speak to you because there'll be a discordant of sounds discordant of, of sound different sound clashing whatever that is <laughs> all kinds of sound all kinds of sound all kinds of sound all kinds of sounds that's why i'm very careful who i listen to on the internet you go online there are several people preaching the word of god but not all not all you should listen to Feel free to ask me who should I listen to. Or if you are listening to someone, let me know and say, Apostle, what do you think about this person? I'll tell you. Some of you have done that before and I'll tell you the truth. I'll say, oh, this one? That's good. Go for that one. That's what it, that is what it means to have a leader over you. To have a spiritual father over you. To guide you. 
it's not control it's guidance so that there'll be growth in your life but those who are in the flesh they'll call it control i can't control me can't tell me what to do i have to no that's a rebellious spirit and the bible says the rebellious dwell in a dry land yeah it's in the bible the rebellious psalm 61 if i'm not mistaken the rebellious dwell in a dry land what does that mean because they continue to rebel they're not in submission to authority that god has placed over them to guide them god says i will give you a pastor after my own heart i'll give you a pastor out of my own heart so if he's giving you a pastor after your own after his own heart why do you have a problem submitting to your leader to your pastor why do you have a problem with that it means that your heart is not right towards god if your heart is not right towards god it's hard to submit what you have is rebellion and then what happens is that you think you are doing something you think you are moving in the things of god but you are in rebellion because there's no submission in your life the rebellious dwell in a dry land now watch this now the word of the lord which came to jeremiah the word of the lord which came so like i said the word will come to you when you are well positioned you, you want to step to the next level the next level comes with a word and that word will come to you you will you'll be able to catch that word capture that word when you are well positioned when you are well positioned you are in the right place where god wants you to be the word of lord came to jeremiah the word of lord came to jeremiah now the word of lord didn't come to jeremiah because he's a prophet not because he's a prophet but because jeremiah carried the burden of israel in him and so once you begin to seek the face of the lord and you carry the burden of something of, of god the burden of the spirit once you're burdened by the things of the spirit you begin to get information you begin to receive data concerning all that the word of the lord which came to jeremiah from the lord and the word of the lord said now when you read that it's like god separated himself from his word it didn't say it didn't say and god spoke to jeremiah no that's not what he's saying the word of the lord that came to jeremiah it's like the word and god are two different entities but it, no it's one it is god listen to this it is god deciding to take action to reveal his will to reveal his plan to reveal his purpose to bring correction to bring upliftment to do something it is god ready to act so he revealed his sound his word unto jeremiah the prophet so this is what happens now god positioning the heavenlies god positioning the heavenlies jeremiah here in the earth right come on follow me follow me are you with me are you with me i wanted to i want to i want to help us and those online this is god here this is jeremiah here on earth burdened burdened with the needs with the destiny of the nation of israel oftentimes the nation of israel will rebel against god and open the door for the enemy to come afflict them and then God will stir up the spirit of the prophet to speak to them and to give them direction. And oftentimes that direction begins with repentance and judgment. But all of this is, is, is for the sake of bringing them to where God wants them to be. Because every time they rebel against God, they go ten times behind of what God is doing and what God where God wants them to be. That's what the rebellion does. When you walk in rebellion, it brings you back, way back. You remember the story of the prodigal son? Went back, went back, back. You bring, you bring loss to your life. You open the door for demons and the satanic realm to bring curses over your life. You invite troubles that you're not supposed to even attract. You invite things in your life that you're not supposed to even attract as sons and daughters of God that's what rebellion does and so 
Jeremiah being burdened God decided to do something about the nation of Israel and so what he did scripture says the word came to Jeremiah now the word words are spirit God is spirit so God communicated to Jeremiah in a way that Jeremiah will understand Jeremiah knew the words of God he knew God's way of articulation he knows the sound of God he knows the operations of God he knows the strategies of God he knows how God operates how God speaks to him remember the story of Elijah God spoke through several means until you know there was earthquake there was fire there was wind but God was not in any of that God was only in a still small voice for Jeremiah he's familiar with the with the word of the Lord and so the word of the Lord came to him as text as vision as visuals as graphics watch this give me the next verse verse 2 saying arise and go arise and go we're talking about divine strategies for the next level it begins with God's word coming to you first you feel this sense of dissatisfaction with where you have been you feel there's more to attain in life you feel like you feel like this can be all of it there's more and sometimes it makes you feel as if you've been wasting your time sometimes it makes you feel you you haven't achieved anything in life at all when you start feeling that way it is god coming to you bringing his word to you and telling you it's time to step up it's time to arise it is time to transition and move to the next level it is god talking to you see our life is like a book our lives is like a book but many people do not move past the index the contents you see in a book in a book you have acknowledgement index you have contents many of us never move past the contents to read the first chapter you are 30 years old you are still in contents try to figure out what God has for your life you are 40 years old you are 45 years old you are still playing around fingling just playing around playing around contents looking at all the contents looking at the topics looking at the chapters you're looking at the chapters but you have never read any of the chapter you've never stepped in chapter one and then there are those who will reach chapter one and get all excited and think they've read the whole chapter and they begin to move as if they've read the whole chapter when you are giving them counsel when you say what they say 10 when you tell them what to do they'll do they don't want to listen to you because they have read chapter 1 and they got so excited with chapter 1 and they are stuck in chapter 1 but they don't know that there are further information and data that is that is that is in chapter 2 chapter 3 that would truly shoot them to the next level they haven't reached there they get excited and then there's a category of people who will skip chapter 1 chapter 2 because they feel it's boring and move to the last chapter and they get excited at the last chapter but then there are information in chapter one in chapter two and in chapter three you've gone way ahead of god and his plan for your life and that's why you don't have the stamina to face life when life happens to you because you missed the chapters God is calling us to arise and walk with him. Walk with him. Walk with him. Not behind him. Not ahead of him. Walk with him. Enoch walked with. With God. And he was not. Not what? Not poor. I know. Not broke. Not sick. He was not. He was taken to the realms of the spirit. 
caught up into dimensions that human eye cannot assess. Enoch. We are called to walk side by side with him. We are called to move side by side with him. We are called to be in sync with the movings of God. With the walkings of God. With the talkings and the movings of God. That's what we are called to. God said to Jeremiah. I'm ready to take my nation, my people to the next level. Arise. Go down to the porter's house. (laughs) Southern information cannot be released to you until you are in the right location. You wonder you've been in that church for many years. Many years you've been in that church. 15 years you've been in that church. And you simply did not know. One simple truth in scripture. Just one simple thing. It was skipped all these years. I was having a talk the other day. Let me not just mention his name. So we're going to pray. He's probably watching. So we're going to pray while we're going to have that talk. So I was, I closed my eyes and I was praying. And his eyes were open. So when I opened my eyes, I saw his eyes were open. I said, why didn't you close your eyes? I closed my eyes and I was praying. You, were you staring at me? (laughs) Were Were you staring at me? He said, no, I was praying with you. I said, but your eyes were open. I said, this is how you do it. When, when you're praying with someone, when you're, when, you're, when you close, when the person praying, when their eyes is closed, you too, you close your eyes. When the eyes are open, you open your eyes. It's a sign of reverence for God. He said, really? He said, I didn't know that. Huh? You didn't? So, for the next, for about 10, 15 minutes, I was teaching on prayer. We've not even got into the subject of our meeting. Something so basic. You don't know it. Now, I don't blame him. Because that's where he's at. You can be in a place and you don't know truth. And that's why if you are in a ministry that the word is not taught. If you're in a ministry and all they teach or all they preach is testimonies. And just make fun. And just tell you motivational stuff. God is about to do this. God is about to bless you. And they talk about haters and all of this kind of stuff. Please, please, you are in the wrong location. They are denying you of some truth that should, that you should know. You are being deprived of the richness of the word of God. And here in this ministry, God forbid that I will stand here and refuse to teach the truth of God's word, the revelation of the word of God. I refuse. I I must teach this thing. Whether you feel like it, whether you like it or not, I have to teach it. If it offends you, I've done a good job. If what I teach offends you, God will stretch his hand and say, son, you a bad boy. I love you, son. Good job, son. Good job, son. That's what he's going to say. If the word does not offend you, does not cut you, does not trim the edges, I remove those chips on your shoulder. That ego. If the word doesn't punch your ego and your pride, it is not truth. It could be true. But it's not truth. It is true that God is about to bless you. But that is not truth. Because truth says you're already blessed in heavenly places. There's a difference between truth. So many people talk about true things. They say the true things. They say the right words. But they are not righteous words. Truth, truth is spirit. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. When truth comes, it will bring your spirit back. 
to life. When fruit comes, it will shape you. It will shake you. It will structure you. When fruit, Jesus says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will teach you all things. Lord, help me teach today. I keep messing this message. Arise <laughs> and go down to the porter's house. Everybody say the porter's house. house. For Jeremiah, in order for God to effectively communicate his mind to him, he needed to ask him to make movement away from where he is at that moment. And to begin to make movement to, make movement to the porter's house. Say it with me, the porter's house. Now, I'm not talking about the one in Dallas. I'm talking about the one... Oh, amen. Arise and go down to the porter's house. And there, 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 there. I will speak to you here. There's a place you need to go to if you want to hear this truth. And I'll give you the address. It is 121 Courthouse Street, Broadbridge, Louisiana, 70517. www.kaiglobal.us. Phone number 337 342 9351. There you go. In case you don't know the number, in case you need direction, or just go on Google, type it Kingdom Awakening International. It's going to be, you see it there. We are all over on the internet. Say, so go there, there. I will cost you. Do you see that? I will make you, I will do something inside of you to make you see the message. In other words, when you get there, I will begin to speak to you with graphics. In other words, I will remove the scale in your eyes that is in this location. There's a veil in your face in this location. And when you begin to obey me and make movement to the location I'm sending you, that veil will be stripped off your face and the information will be clear to you. Every time God wants to speak, he speaks in a way for us to truly understand. To a baby, he will speak in a way, in the language of a baby. To a grown-up folk, to the grown-up folk, he will speak to them in a language that they will understand and also to grown-up folks oftentimes God will speak to grown-up folks in the language of a baby because they have refused to grow you are 65 years old God will speak to you by saying A, B, C, D, E, F, G A, D, 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 D. you are 65 years old <laughs> And then he or she will say, Yes, I hear you, Lord. A, B, A for apple, B for boy. So, God, what are you saying? I should go buy apples from the store? <laughs> because people refuse to grow. You're 65, but you act like six. It's so easy to see that. It's so easy to tell. You see, grown up folks act, acting like babies, like, acting like children, throwing tantrums all over the place. <laughs> These are apple chip. These are apples. A B C A B C D alphabet mindset. <laughs> there, everybody said there. Say it again. Say there. There I will cause you to hear my words. Where you are now, you can't hear it. I gotta move your location. I got to move your physical location and your spiritual location. Many of you are stuck in physical locations that block spiritual revelation. Folks are stuck in locations that blocks spiritual information. They can't hear. They can't see why their location has blocked their view. And that's why God will cause you to move location. Give me the next verse, verse 3. Let's see what God, why God is doing all of this. What? Okay. That clock is deceiving me. We have to change that. Then I went. Everybody say, then I went. 
then I went <laughs> may you go when God sends you may you go when God sends you when God calls you to move may you move see that's the problem God is saying it's time to move it's time to go where you can hear my word where I can cause you to hear my word where I can cause you to hear this truth where I can cause you to hear my I mean this information but you listen to what other people are saying to you about the place you listening you listen to what people are saying hmm you say you want to go to that church you want to go to that african guy's church do you want to go there the devil is a liar because he wants to rob you of the right information that will make you move to your next level he's holding you back he, see oh glory to god let me let me let me tell you this god when god when god <coughs> Let, let me let me put it this way let me put this there put it this way the devil cannot make you do anything the devil cannot make you do anything what he does is this he seduces you by giving you information and once you receive the seduction of your spirit of, of your soul first is your soul which is your senses your five senses once you are seduced by the devil by the enemy in your soul your soul sends that data that information to your spirit for your spirit to vet it now if your spirit doesn't have biceps like the one I have <laughs> If your spirit is not muscular in shape if you don't feed your spirit with prayer with the Word of God if your spirit is not stout it's not muscular it's not strong when that data reaches your spirit because your spirit is weak your spirit is passive your spirit cannot vet any information or data so what happens now both your soul and your spirit embraces that seduction from the devil and the next thing you act then you say the devil made me do it no the devil never made you did it do it remember when the serpent came to the woman in the garden he said has God said it it came with a conversation and that conversation will come first true to your soul and the soul sends information that information to your spirit man depression does not just happen overnight I was doing that teaching the other night at, at Bible study it begins with anxiety depression begins with anxiety that's what the scripture says be anxious for nothing because the key the door the door to depression is anxiety and once you're in that state of anxiety you begin to worry about even things you can't control things you're supposed to relinquish control you begin to worry about that you can't control it you can't control it but the enemy begins to make you think about those things worry about those things being anxious about all those things and so over time over time after some time then because your needs and your expectations are not fulfilled your spirit is weighed down you begin to feel a sense of emptiness you look at your life you can't see achievement you can't see how much God has blessed you you are worrying about what you don't have yet and so you are blinded by that situation you are blinded by that situation and you can't see what God has given or done already that leads you slowly your soul your soul begins to catch capture worry fear stress you are now right in the midst and you're now at the at the corridors of depression and then you start getting depressed 
slowly you're degenerating in your soul in your thoughts what happens now you start isolating yourself so that you can truly so that that spirit will start causing you to isolate yourself so that you can truly stay and enjoy that spirit of depression enjoy enjoy the demons want to enjoy that moment on that or that period of time he wants you to stay there for a long time and throughout this time nothing you have ever accomplished means anything to you the devil make sure you don't put value on the things that god has blessed you with <laughs> and make sure you don't see anything good about your life at that moment if your spirit is not built if your spirit is not built it's so easy it's so easy it's so easy I don't know why, where I was where was I then I went down to the porter's house and there he was making something making so say with me God is making something God is making something in my life God is doing something in my life I didn't hear you shout, shout it again God jump to your feet and shout it God is doing something in my life God is doing something in my life maybe see it I know you felt that then I went down to the porter's house and there he was making something at the wheel at the wheel God will bring you to a location so that you can begin to hear him clearly in that place watch this give me the next verse at the wheel somebody said at the wheel God loves wheels. When you read the book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel talks a lot about the wheels, the wheels. Some angels, some people think angels are always having wings and flying. Some angels are wheels with eyes. No wings. Some people think uh, <laughs> when angels want to appear, they are somewhere in the skies, beyond the skies. They will just fly. <laughs> <laughs> and when people die bless their soul angels by their side when you're dead there's no angel around you angels are not assigned to the dead angels are assigned to the living oh, so I know I know she's a beautiful angel now in heaven those are all uh, what do you call it uh, just not cliche just just to make you feel good if they were wicked here on earth there's no angel anywhere forget that forget that thing <laughs> now what's this now god walks with wheels all the time god walks with wheels god walks with wheels you know why because god god has the nature of progression the wheel describes in scripture the dimensions of God's movement on earth. The wheel describes God's progressiveness, God's progression, how God moves. God is not static. God is not God is not is not standing by. God is not stationed somewhere. God is continually moving by his spirit and the wheel the wheel is designed for movement the wheel is designed for movement so when God called Jeremiah he sent him to the potter's house and he made him see what the potter was making in the wheel to show to Jeremiah that he's not stopping in his processes he's not stopping in his dealings he's not stopping in his walking he's progressive in his work and as we declare this year 2024 as the year of the next level God is saying to us we are going to begin to move by the wheels of the spirit glory to God we are going to begin to move by the wheels of the spirit 
expect expect surprises God will surprise you God will surprise us God will show us his favor God will show us his kindness in places we least expect why because he's gonna begin to move in the hearts of men and women he's gonna begin to move in the spirit of people he's gonna begin to move in the lives of so many people and guess what they will begin to respond to the voice of God they'll begin to respond to the promptings of the spirit and they'll begin to do things Amen. that God has that God has destined for us glory God watch this and the vessel that he made of clay was murdered in the hand of the potter so he made it again into another vessel, and as it seemed good to the potter to make God says to Jeremiah go to the house of the potter go to the potter's house and I'll cause you to see these are the things I'll make you to see so when Jeremiah got there this is the narrative of what he saw at the potter's house he saw that the potter was making a vessel and that vessel was broken <laughs> he breaks to make he breaks to make are you seriously telling me that God cannot just say Eve appear Sean come come help me here The man, I mean the woman was made from where? From the Adam. From the, from the rib of man, from the rib of Adam. Right? So the God who said, let there be light. Cannot say, Eve, come alive. Let there be Eve. Why didn't he do that? Why didn't he say, let there be Eve. Just like he said, let there be light. <laughs> But what did he do? He took the man. You look like Adam though. I was there that day when God was making Eve. The scripture tells us. Out of the rib. Out of the rib of Adam. Out of the rib. The rib is on your side. Because the woman is supposed to be by your side. Out of the side. The woman shouldn't be behind you. And it shouldn't be in front of you. You're not a woman, sorry. No, no, no. I'm just making an example. Now. You know, these days, you know, <laughs> we, we got to be, we got to clarify that. <laughs> I was telling Pastor Betty yesterday that the greatest weapon the enemy is using in this day to destroy the world is the spirit of perversion. That's a teaching for another day. So he cut him to take the rib out. Thank you. He cut him to take the rib out. And the process of cutting him, he broke him. He broke him. He cut him. He took from to make for. He will take from to make for. He will break to make your next level could just be breaking 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 god will begin to break you god will begin to humble you god will begin to strip things out of your life and others are celebrating testimony having testimonies testifying of things that is happening in their lives but you you are going through a season of breaking and you say this can't be the next level who told you it's not the next level don't you realize in order for god to make for you he has to break you it's easy to say lord use me lord use me lord use me lord use me really okay he will allow tests and trials to come sometimes for god to use you not sometimes often time it's short you, god will allow certain things to live your life you will have losses for god to endorse you and use you losses it's not fancy be careful with all this prayer lord use me i used to pray that and i stopped it <laughs> i said lord i will be done i don't lord use me 
because I don't know what to expect. Lord, use me. The next day, all your, your, your car break down. And the insurance say, I can't cover that. How much is it? $4,500. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, you can use anything. You can use me. Stop those. <laughs> and the vessel that he made of clay was buried in his hand of the potter so he made it again he made it again he made it again there's a progression there's a progression he'll continue to make you now this is not watch this let, let me put it and the vessel that he made of clay was made in his hand in the hand of the potter so he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to the potter who make i mean to make until the potter arrive at the finish he doesn't stop god now give me the next verse let's see this let's see the reason god is saying all of this then the word of the lord came to me saying see the word came to him again now it's in the place now god has now revealed to him the truth of what he wants to communicate then he now moves it to the next level now by saying now you've seen this thing that i wanted you to see you've seen this image you've seen this whole thing playing out in your eyes now this is the reason why i have brought you to this place to see this next verse verse six then he said oh house of israel can i not do with you as this potter says the lord look as the clay is in the hand in the potter's hand so are you in my hand O house of israel so he says house of israel you have not allowed me to make you the way i want to make you you are stuck in your ways you have not given me access to you to make you right to fix you to to walk you God made Jeremiah see that the walking of the potter with the clay was more than once. There were several, several, several walk. He would design it, he would break it. Something is wrong. He will fix it, he will correct it. He keeps making it and making it and making it until give me go back to verse five or four this is where god is taking us okay yes verse four and the vessel that he made of clay was murdered in the hand of the potter that is not the next level the finish place is not that but that's the process to the next level the process is always not perfect he makes all things what beautiful in his time so before he gets you to that place this is what goes on and the vessel that he made of clay was murdered was murdered in the hand of the potter mm. it's murdered it's not perfect it's not perfect saints of god are you ready are you ready for this process are you ready for this operations of god are you ready for this when god brings you to the operating theater when he brings you to the theater room and then he begins to cut you it begins to break you it begins to take things out of your life and you begin to feel the pain because when god is doing these things he doesn't give you epidora he doesn't give you an ast an ast uh what's that Anastasia. He doesn't give you Anastasia. He doesn't, he doesn't inoculate you so that you don't feel the pain. It is the pain that produces what he wants in you. The pain, the hurt, the disadvantage situation that it seemed like. It is that ingredient he's looking for to shape you. So that you don't depend on yourself or on anything else. You now come to the place where you depend totally on God. When God strip you of everything, you have nothing left except your spirit. You're, you're just you. What is left? Nothing. No money in the account. You're financially drained. 
you're struggling financially you don't have this you don't have that you're struggling to even take care of your children your grandchildren you 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 can't even do things that you need to do on a normal day he's stripping you of all of that he's stripping you of all of that it's easy to say devil i bind you it's easy to think it's the devil no it is this work that god is doing in your life because he doesn't want you to come to the place where you depend on your job as your source of living do you know the children of israel never walked a day in their lives when they left egypt they never worked but god fed them god fed them god clothed them the bible says even their shoes did not wear out on their on their feet in 40 years of their journey in the wilderness their shoes you you go, go wear one shoe for 40 years what will be left in that shoe is the lace <laughs> not even the lace all the lace is the plastic is the plastic that ties the end of the lace that we left left <laughs> 40 years their shoes when didn't wear out god even took it to the next level by causing manna what they don't know to fall from the skies to fall from heaven to feed them god was just simply trying to tell them my people my sons and my daughters you got to trust me you got to depend on me you got to see me as your only source that even in the wilderness even in the desert i will still provide for you i will still take care of you i'm fully aware of your needs and i am your provider i will provide for you and so god will come to you and then strip you of everything so that you stop depending on your ability you stop depending on your gift you stop depending on your potential you stop depending on your education you stop depending on the things that you think qualifies you as success or successful in life he'll take you take all of that out look at that and the vessel that he made clear was murdered in the hand of the porter so he made it again into another vessel another vessel it is that vessel everybody say with me another vessel the next level requires you to become a different version of yourself you lose the version of yourself as you know it and you come you are made into the version that God has crafted in his hand until you get there you come you can embrace the next level until you get there you still continue to fight with the version that god wants to craft you to and the version of yourself as you know it your default your default your default version cannot capture the dimensions of the next level you can't it's not qualified you can't assess that and so god we have to craft you god we have to cause you to be broken there's got to be brokenness there's got to be things broken in your life things so many things will have to be taken away so that the true version of heaven the architecture the designs of heaven can reflect in your life as it seems uh, give me the ben hill Ikris version of the good news bible Let's see what it says in verse 4. Whenever a piece of pottery turned out imperfect, he would take the clay and make it into something else. <laughs> That's why they won't, they won't notice you when God is done with you. They won't notice you when God is done with you. And another person, you become a different vessel, a different person altogether. They'll look at you, what is that you? They won't believe it you say yes yeah, me but this time no ego no pride all you just do is smile and say god is faithful god is faithful because you know you got there not by your own strength not by your own ability it is the grace of god that worked it out it is the grace of God that worked it out. Oh, I don't have time to tell you about the life, the life of Abraham. The life of Abraham. 
Okay, quickly give me this. Let me see if I can touch it quickly. Go to Genesis chapter 1, chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. I'm done. I'm done. I'll just touch this for within five minutes and I'll be done. Ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. Five minutes. Five minutes. Now it came to pass. No, chapter Genesis chapter 22. Chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. And give me the King James. New King James. Chapter 22 and verse 1. We're going to rush it. We're going to rush it. But there's something I want to show you in there. But the strategies, the strategies, the workings of God towards the next level. Now it came to pass after these things, that was after these things, that God tested, not tempted, tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Next verse. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be wasting time. I'm going straight in. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac. Abraham had many sons, two at that time. Ishmael was the first. And then Isaac, God said to him, look at, look at it again. Take now your son. That's the first thing Abraham heard. And Abraham was so excited. Oh, Abraham was cool with it. Until he heard the next verse, the next line. Your son Isaac. Ah, I've waited 90, 90 years plus for this. He heard first. You see the comma. I know the original writings there were no punctuations, there were no commas and full stop on the original scroll that was written none of that, there were no chapters there were no verses, it's just a whole thing the, the scriptures were now broken down like this for us to consume and understand he said take now your son your only son Isaac, whom you what? whom you what? Ooh. God loves what you love God's attention is on those things that you love. Because those things that you love could become an idol and will hinder you from stepping to the next level. From moving in the next level. And so the strategy is this. God will begin to point you towards those things that you love. God's attention is on those things that you love. And you know what it is. You know those things that you love. Some are not good. Those things that you love. The attention of God will come upon those things when he wants to transition you and move you to the next level. The things, the so, it says, it says, whom you love and go to the land of Moriah. That word, that name, that, that name Moriah means teacher. And offer him there as what? Burnt offering. What you love, let it die kill make a burnt offering of that thing that you love burn it with fire offer him there as a burnt offering on one of those mountains of one on one of the mountains of which i shall tell you god says the mountain i'm not showing you i'm not giving you the map but just keep going when you get there i'll show you where it is when God wants to take you to the next level, often next level, often time, He won't give you specifics. He'll just say, "Just keep going, just obey, just obey, just keep going, just keep doing it." I'm, I keep doing this thing. I keep doing this thing. I keep doing this, but I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't. Just keep doing it. You're not getting a result. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. As long as you are responding to the command of God, to the instruction of God. To the leading of God. Stay there obeying the voice of God until God tells you the next thing. The last time you heard God was the time you obeyed God. The moment you obeyed God, you've heard God. If you don't obey God, God doesn't count it as you hearing him. Because he's sovereign. He wants you to respond, obey, walk in obedience. If you are willing. If you are willing and obedient. You will eat the best of the land. Watch this now. Give me verse 3. Hurry, hurry, hurry. You see, they're taking my time. It's not me, it's them. Sound room. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his sons, two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and he split the wood for the burnt offering 
and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Next verse. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place after. It was three days after he was on that journey. He now, how do you travel for three days? You don't know where you're going. Because God says the next level, you must depend on me to direct you, to lead you, to instruct you, to teach you, to show you. Oh, I wish I can stay here a few for a few minutes. Because some of you are in this in this place right now. And what God is what God is doing in your life or what God is about to bring into your life, it looks so far off. It looks so far off. Far away. Far, so far. And you think it's going to take 10 years for God to do it. <laughs> That's your natural eyes. That's your human senses telling you it's far. But watch this. Watch this. Verse 5. Verse 5. And Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey I think I've taught on this several times stay here with donkeys you are not part of this thing when God is taking you to the next level it, you must follow instruction Abraham knows this business is between him and his son and God no other person the servant can only go as far as the foot of the mountain but the mountain top it belongs to those that God is calling to the next level. Guess who is going? Guess who is being called to the next level here? Who? Abraham, right? Guess what? Isaac too. <laughs> Even Isaac is being called to the next level. Not just Abraham. Watch this. Stay here with the donkeys. Or the donkey and the lad and I will go. Go where? Yonder. Go up. Go up. Go up. <laughs> and worship. And we'll come back to you. God said to Abraham, go kill your son. But when God, when Abraham is telling his servants about what God told him, he called it worship. Go home. Look at what Abraham is calling worship. That's to tell you the depth of worship that is in the heart of Abraham. Not music. Not music. We mistake music as the only as the only uh, 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 as the only source of worship. But a heart that is sold out to God. A heart that is that is that is sold out to God and willing to go where God is going, willing to walk in obedience, willing to walk in the will of God. That is true worship, not just music. God said, kill your son. Kill your son. Take your son to the mountaintop and go kill him. Offer him as a sacrifice to me. Abraham knew exactly what God was telling him to do because in the among the Orientals, the culture, the practices in the land of, of Haran, where Abraham dwelt at that time, most of the gods and deities that the heathen worship, the deities request. They also request them to offer their children, especially their sons. Because sons, when you talk about sons, you're talking about generations because they carry the seed. So the day is we request them to offer their sons. So when Abraham heard the voice of God, as a matter of fact, Abraham, God spoke to Abraham in a manner that he understands. He knows how the hidden gods do it. So he knows fully well that this is God speaking. But he doesn't know the full intention of God. He didn't know that it was a test. When it's now reading, it's called test. But when Abraham heard it, it was not a test. It was a direction. It was an instruction. For the what? Next level. Now, watch this. But when Abraham said this, when he repeated this to his sons, I mean his servant, he called it worship. 
because everything becomes sacred and worshipped you when you come to that place of total commitment and yieldedness to God. And it says we will come back. Did you hear that? We we you're supposed to say an I we Abraham, A.B. what are you talking about? I said oh, you're not coming back, there's no we you're coming alone, dude you're coming alone he said we <laughs> he was being prophetic without knowing it see once you obey God everything about you is prophetic whatever you do whatever you say is prophetic he's trying to console them he's trying to just deceive them but even that lying to them that they will come back him and Isaac he was lying but it was prophetic and it is the truth we will come back everything becomes sacred when you walk in obedience everything becomes sacred it becomes prophetic about you even when you laugh <laughs> it becomes prophetic your laugh irritates demons when you walk in obedience watch this and we will come back to you we will come back to you in Abraham there was a knowing that God is not a murderer he's a rewarder See, they're taking my time now. Next verse. Next verse. Six, six, six. I think I'll leave this for next week. Ah, no. I have to stop. I have to stop. I have to stop. Let, let me just do this one. <coughs> so Abraham took the wood of the burden. Let me leave it. Let me leave it. The part I'm going is the altar. That would take me time. I'll chip it in on Thursday at Bible study online. Stand to your feet. Let me leave it. Thursday, Thursday Bible study is going to be online. That I'll teach more on it. I'll teach more on it. Because this is, this is, this is going to take us a while. Lift your hand. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Come on, give him praise. Just, just begin to speak to him. Come on, come on, come on, saints. Yes. 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 Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you. Come on, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Oh, Some people are going through stuff. There are some of you watching right now. You're going through stuff. God says, I'm speaking to you. And I'm drawing attention. I'm drawing my attention to you. God says the things that you love might be a limitation, a hindrance to you stepping to your next level. You got to let them go. You got to offer them as a bond sacrifice unto me, says God. And then I will walk a walk in you. Many of us, many people are still where they can. They are in a place where they can see what is God saying, what God is doing. Because your location is wrong. Your location is wrong. Your location is wrong. Ask God to begin to move you, to begin to lead you by His Spirit. Saints, this is not a year that we have to joke with. This is not a year that we have to joke with. We have to follow through this year intentionally because there's so much ahead of us this year, 2024. Lift your hand. Father, I pray today by Your Spirit and by Your power move in our midst, move in our hearts let your word be established in the hearts of your people and I'm asking Holy Spirit that you will walk in the internal environment of our being reconfigure, realign our ecosystems 
our environment the atmosphere of our existence within move us from where we have been to where we should be and we ought to be the place that you've designed and destined for us to be father i pray if there's anyone this morning this morning god that is going through things they don't understand give them understanding give them clarity through the admonishment the administration of your word spirit of god may yokes be destroyed may struggles be broken may curses be reversed may your blessings be provoked in the life of your people i'm asking today holy spirit do a new thing in your in the lives of your people do a radical surgery in the hearts of your people align them god walk and walk in us walk and walk in us holy spirit walk and walk in us holy spirit and may your name be glorified now and forever god ah sada priyana messiah